your media, where you are. Dumela, good day, Sanibonani. My name is Balesa. Welcome to our first show called Redefining Your Money with Balesa. So, Redefining Your Money is a show that is curated for females or women, whichever way you want to look at it, that are young, that are starting to work, that have been working for years, that are executives, that are entrepreneurs, that are single mothers, that are married women. And the concept of the show is really just talking about basics of financial management. You can also look at it as the basic stuff that you need to always remember when you're looking at your money. The purpose of the show is really to, just to make sure that we empower you to make sure that if you are ever faced with any fin difficult financial decisions, you have the information, you have the knowledge, and you can make those decisions. Today, in the studio, I have a special friend, a special colleague, a special partner. It's none other than Siva Njoba. Siva Njoba is my partner at Invelo Wealth Solution. We co-founded the company together. Thank you so much, Balisa, for having me on this show. I think it's a privilege and an honor to be your first guest. And I think really being your business partner and just to give a bit of background as to why we even started Invelo Wealth, not only was it because of our passion for the industry, but also that wanting, that, that burning desire actually to want to make an impact and to empower women. So one of the reasons why we actually started Invelo Wealth was to really empower our clients and impact them, to help them as they make financial decisions and help them navigate the world of finances. Our, our passion was also one of the things that we shared that helped us to spark and start this business. Fantastic. So, Siva is very, very learned. I am not going to go too much into who she is and what she has studied, but what I do want to briefly read is that this lady right here holds a post-graduate, uh, a post-diploma um, in financial planning from the University of Free State, which makes it easy for me to speak to someone like her because I believe that she understands what uh, financial management is about, right? And so what I want to ask Siva, what I want to ask from you, Siva, is what does money management mean to you? Money, money management really talks to my relationship, my personal relationship with money, actually. And why is it personal? My spending preferences are totally different to yours. My budget, how I... I manage my money. It's totally different to the next person. My attitudes, how uh, I, I simulate with money, you know. So that is what embodies what financial management is to me on a personal level. So basically, at Invelo Wealth, as a wealth manager, my role really is to hold a, cl a client um, and help them as they build wealth. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but to give guidance from a financial perspective, to give them a financial plan, help them to achieve their financial goals. Mm -hmm. So when one comes to me and says, Siba, here's my portfolio. I don't know what's going on here. Please, can you review it? Mm -hmm. My starting point will then be to gather all the client information, build a relationship with them, and help them um, as I do this review process in terms of where changes are necessary, are they adequately covered from a life cover perspective or risk management perspective? And also you look at where they are in terms of their investments, what are they saving for, is it children's education? Is it my saving for the next car? So that is basically the basics of what your advisors to do. Then it can go a bit broader. You can go into what we can call an estate plan where you look at an individual's estate planning needs. Uh, you would do an estate duty calculation for them and just give them an indicator of how their affairs from an estate planning look like. Okay. Well, what is always interesting for me is, in fact, if I take it back, back to before I got introduced to being a financial planner, I never used to understand what a financial planner does, you know? And I never even knew that if, for instance, you wanted to take a retirement annuity or you wanted to save or you wanted to do budgeting, that 
it's actually a financial planner that you need to, to speak to. I always thought you go to the bank and that the bank have all the answers. So <laughs> I've realized, you know, as I started working and, and, and chatting to other people, and but particularly when I got to the industry, because I got into the industry early on in my career, that actually a financial planner is the one that is able to unpack everything for clients <coughs> and be able to sort of create a roadmap if, for instance, you want to do X and you want to do Y and things like that. And that was interesting for me. Okay. So how has been your experience as in your individual capacity? And if you can even take it back to as you were growing up, I mean, I can tell you a lot of stories about Siva. Siva used to sell stuff away. She's going <laughs> to tell us about that. <laughs> but sure. you tell the story. I don't want to. I don't want to mess up your own stories, my friend. So growing up, um, by the time I was in high school, I, I, I really liked the idea of being independent financially. So by the time I was in high school already, I was selling Tupperware and I was selling Avon, you name it. I enjoyed the ability to have my own money. And I remember going to the bank because I'm from Stutterheim, a very small town in the Eastern Cape. And when you want to start a your journey on savings, the first place that was in front of me was the bank. However, the bank is not the only place that one can put their money away in terms of being able to save money. There's an entire industry built around it. So even the advisor you have, um, there are different types of financial advisor, financial planners out there in the industry. So you want to understand, is this individual what, is, what we would call a tied agent? What is a tied agent? This would be somebody who's tied to a particular financial services provider company where they only have a mandate or a contract to sell that particular company's uh, investment products or whatever product offering they've got. Then you have what we call independent financial planners. They now, on the other hand, have a wider spectrum in terms of financial services providers you get. So you can think about it as going into a pick and pay. When you go into a store, like a pick and pay, you are then able to pick a number of yeah. products from yeah. the shelf. Yeah. You know, then there's a wider variety in terms of what I can get when I shop around mm. in the market. Mm. So the other important thing also is, if someone is out there looking for somebody to assist them on their financial journey, what is it that they're supposed to be looking for? I would then say, number one, you want to be able to work with somebody that you can trust. Because you need to be so open with them and tell them, this is where I am, these are my financial goals, this is what I'm going through. Because remember, financial advice is important for all life stages. Mm -hmm. So whether I'm having a divorce, uh, whether I'm having a new baby, you need to be able to um, have somebody that you can be open and honest with in terms of your financial position, your financial goals, and where you want to be ultimately. Mm. Then the next thing you want to look at the experience and mm. the education. Mm. Because the more ex qualified an individual is, the more value you're going to get from them. And also you want to know that you're dealing with an experienced individual that's going to be able to guide you throughout your financial journey. Most importantly, this is someone that's going to have to be easily available to you. So you want to be able to have that relationship with your financial planner. Ah, I agree with all those things, Siva. I completely agree. Now, the way I look at, at finances is it's sort of like a, a, you know, your Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You start at the bottom and you go up with the hierarchy as you go up. So that person must be available right here at the bottom as you're starting out and move up this hierarchy all the way to financial freedom if that's ultimately where you want to get to. Next up, Siva, I want us to chat about things like uh, budgeting, you know, which is part of basics of financial management, debt, Cash flow, which are some of the things that make it difficult for people to be able to um, to actually invest and save, but there's also other things that we uh, we maybe quickly uh, need to touch on, uh, like insurance and investments that are available. We spoke about how important it is to make sure that if you're looking at financial management, budgeting is important, investing is important, insurance is important. And I could go on and on into things like that, which we'll chat about later. 
Can you maybe elaborate on some of these subjects a little bit so that we, we are clearer or at least we give our view, viewers a clearer um, understanding of where to start when you're looking at things like those? Right. So your budget is really your starting point of taking control of your finances. Your budget gives you an idea of how much money is coming in, what am I spending my money on? Mm -hmm. And what am I left with at the end of the month mm -hmm. once I've paid up all my expenses? So really, if you really want to take uh, prudent care of your finances, mm -hmm. your budget is the starting point. Mm -hmm. Then also spend some time going over your three to six months bank statements because those statements will tell you exactly how you are spending the money mm. you have. You will say exactly where am I transacting the most. Uh, for example, how much am I spending on uh, eating out? How much am I spending on Uber drives and so forth? And in that way, you can then say on a monthly basis, this is how much I'm allocating to Uber travel or this is how much I'm spending going out, this is how much I pay for rent. Mm. And I can then best prepare myself for unforeseen expenses. Mm. Also with regards to the budget, I also say, you want to be able to break up your 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 budget into three components per se. Mm. Fifty percent of your money must go towards your major needs, that being your bond repayments, your rent, your car, and so those are the expenses you really can't get away with not paying. Mm. Then you want to look at like thirty percent. I would recommend that one puts away towards your needs, that being your um, savings for retirement, savings for long term, mm. for your short term, creating an emergency fund and so forth. Then the 20% of the money can then go to your wants. This yeah. is when I want to spoil myself. This is the money I go out and about with mm. and uh, you need to live. So you, you want to be able to allocate an amount of money to say this is my splurge fund where I will then go if I want to go out. You're getting me excited when you talk about splurge <laughs> fund. <laughs> no, but, but you have anyway, to. Anyway, <laughs> they, they, you know what? They, they, the thing is, where I wanted to start, Siva, before we get excited, is it's difficult, though. Let's let's be honest. You and I have been in this space for such a long time. Uh, we know how difficult it is to actually manage your budget. You know. So, what are the, some of those tools? You know, those small things that you've either have learned from someone, maybe your mom, your dad. I mean, we must be realistic here. Ma some of my uh, money management um, discipline actually comes from my mother. Believe it or not, my mom, for instance, has a separate bank account. You know that she doesn't touch no matter what. And I look at this woman, I'm like, wow, I'd like to be like you one day. You know, so that's the type of things, you know, that you, that you pick up as you move along. But at the same time, as much as we want to be there, you know, the, types of, the type of lives that we live and the Instagram and the social media and the Facebook and these things, all these things that happen, the makeup, darling, you know, all these things, they, they cost money, but at the same time, we really want them. And how do we then slot them in into our budget to make sure that we are still able to do them regardless of the fact that, uh, you know, they are costing us more than what we can afford? So, Balisa, mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is if you're spending more than what you're earning, mm -hmm. you're going to find a deficit. Mm -hmm. And that shortfall has to be funded by something. Yeah. So it's either I'm going to get money from someone, mm -hmm. loan it from the bank, or wherever mm -hmm. you would get that excess money from. Mm -hmm. And that could ultimately could potentially lead to bad financial decisions, mm -hmm. or you could start uh, creating bad financial habits. Mm -hmm. So that is why I would then go back to setting this budget to help you then create a framework of spending for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you know that you spend a thousand rand on makeup a month, mm -hmm. then maybe instead of having a makeup artist, mm. learn how to do this yourself mm. in that way you just buy the product and mm. you do your makeup yourself. Mm. If this is something you can, you know, YouTube is a great place to go and learn skills you don't have. I'm just trying to say one needs to be able to find creative ways in which they can manage their spending. Mm. What is important to you may not be necessarily that important to me. Mm. Therefore, personal finance is very personal, I always say. Mm. And the way, in, uh, so, so someone else could be comfortable with not paying uh, a car installment and say, I'm not going to buy a car until I've saved up for the money I need to have a car. Mm. I, on the other hand, would like, there's no way I'm going to wait five years to have the money I need for a car. I'm going to go and buy it on a higher purchase on an installment sale. Mm. So re it really goes back to your point that you were making that what informs my, my, my attitude towards my money? That yeah. could be from your mo your mother 
or whoever gave you the basics of the principles of financial management, like, um, you know, whether it be you, you're part of a stock file group, you know, if that money, you, when it comes, you allocate it and you put it towards your long-term savings or a portion of it towards your short-term savings, whatever it is, the method in which you cultivate the culture of saving. Mm, mm. That is what you can use too. And I mean, there are a lot of other investment products that one can look at, your tax-free savings accounts, mm. you can, you know, also look at a unit trust. So there are options in terms of where one can put money away to mm. make sure they've got money for an emergency fund or money mm. for whatever it is, whether it's going on a vacation, yeah. save for it so that you don't find yourself um, spending situation. over yeah. than what yeah. you were supposed to. Yeah. So you, you, you have actually highlighted uh, the important things. I think that structure is very important, you know. Uh, you mentioned the, 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 the 50, 30, uh, 20 principle of budgeting, which helps one to make sure that they separate what is a need to what is a want, because of course, we'll always have wants. Wants will never end. That is I right. often say when I speak to my clients that we can never pretend not to be people, yes. because that's what we are. We are people and we've got wants. And we just need to make sure that we put plans in place to make sure that we can actually get to the ones. So that entertainment budget for me, yes, in terms of how much it should be, <laughs> it's a different conversation, but that entertainment budget is important to have. You touched on something that I, that I, that I know that you are passionate about, which is stock fells. And a lot of our ladies having, you know, growing up again, you know, in societies where our moms belonged to a society, we kind of learned that whole thing of you must have a stock fell. And I must say, a lot of people really do appreciate stock, stock fells. I don't want to, us to go too much into that discussion. But next time when we have a discussion around stock fells, I'd like you to touch a bit on that because I know it's one of mm. your of, of your interests. Yes. But maybe you can just maybe give us a brief of your position where stock stockfells are concerned. I think for me what is important around stockfells is that most of us when you think of stock files in the traditional sense mm -hmm. or when when as a group you set up your stock file, you forget legalizing the entity, first of all, because if it's not legalized, um, you need to make sure that we've got a constitution, for example. Mm -hmm. you, 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 And also the other thing is it's not only the banks that can give you competitive rates mm -hmm. on the money that you're putting away in the stock file. So look at, at unit trusts as options. Look at other options that are just not what the bank would traditionally offer you. And I think mm -hmm. that is the greatest misconception around the stock file industry, that everyone just thinks that if it's not at the bank, then it's not going to be able to happen. It's just that the bank is a convenient point mm. when it comes to opening the bank account for the stock mm. however people need to think especially for money that's going to be for long-term purposes mm. you could get better growth um, if you look at other investment options that are out there yeah i've always imagined how far we can go as females if we were to use stock fails to actually buy property you know, buy a business, do this, do that. I know there are people that are doing stuff like that, but perhaps it can go a very long way. Definitely, and I, I think those are the kind of conversations we need to have to drive mm -hmm. um, the narrative uh, along, along in terms of how we're thinking about having our stock fills. Instead of just having a one-year stock fill, let's look at a five-year term. Yeah. What can we achieve in terms of our 100%. growth? And what can this money do for us in the long term versus us just having a stock fill for 12 months and then that's the end of it? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so after this, Siva, I just want us to now summarize this and just touch on what is, what is the proper percentage to allocate if you now have all your money, you know, committed to something, what is the proper percentage that you can allocate to your savings or investment? But we'll touch on that in a bit. Siva, we've had a lovely discussion. It's been long, but it's been very empowering. I really hope that our viewers have, have, have received the message that we're trying to, to send out there. Your parting words? I think for me, what I'd really like to leave with everyone is 
there's a journey to get right with your finances. Let's start there. Um, and I want to really say, start saving. Even if it's 500 rand a month, start with what you have and where you are. Build healthy financial habits and find yourself a financial planner, somebody who you're going to walk the journey with to avoid yourself getting into debt and you know be having an unhealthy relationship with your money because then that's how you're going to be able to reach your goal for financial freedom. Fantastic. I'm going to end off by saying you mentioned that it is a journey. And it's important for people to understand that with finances, it's never a destination. You never say, I've arrived, because anything can change anytime. You just need to plan and be prepared. And that's all we can do. We are called financial planners for a reason. We can certainly help you to plan to get you where you are. But the important thing is when it comes to money management, you need to make sure that you are clear on what your goals are. And, of course, you've got a partner right next to you who can hold your hand to get to your destination. As for today's show, I'm wrapping it up by saying thank you, Ria Lebua, and till we see each other again. <laughs>